Good morning, good evening, and good day. Thank you so much for watching Attack Power Gaming. Today, we're continuing our How to Play the Division series with the 8th Indian Infantry Division, Division Tech. If you enjoy this content, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing for more SD2 content. And if you really enjoy this and want to support the channel even more, consider joining me on Patreon. You can get access to our private Discord and coaching and such, which is really cool. Let's dive right in. So here we are with the 8th Indian Infantry Division, probably the only Commonwealth Division I kind of enjoy to play other than 6th Airborne. 6th Airborne and this one are the only two, I, me personally, I think are legitimate players. Uh, I do not find most of the other Commonwealth Divisions to be very good. Uh, there, there's an inherent weakness in the rifles that I just don't like, uh, but that's me personally. It's, I'm not saying this is a bad division. It's very solid. Uh, ranks pretty high right now. This one definitely has a nice mix of stuff. It doesn't have any significant weaknesses at all. Let's dive into the strengths and weaknesses here. Infantry, you get Indian rifles, which are better than normal rifles, so it's definitely a step in the right direction. You get some really strong infantry options, which can definitely help make up that inherent rifle weakness of the Commonwealth Divisions. You get some good options in the recon tab, so it's it's a very solid one overall. Uh, nothing like overboard great. It's not like an amazing one, like a one like an Axis one chock full of armored cars, but it does get the job done quite well. Tanks are Shermans. Your your tank tab are Shermans. Take it or leave it for plus or good. There's definitely good things and bad things about that. Support tab very weak. Very few options. Not much to do with it. The AT tab is the usual Commonwealth AT tab, which is probably not a great thing based on the options provided but it does get the job done aa it's very straightforward if there's one real option and it does what you need to 40 mils uh the artillery tab's quite solid you have a really good unit in there that can really carry the day and your air tab is very good as well as most commonwealth air tabs tend to be so let's let's dive into the specifics here so in the infantry you get lots of options here I decided to go with the field engineers at the beginning instead of the defense groups or the uh, you know, pioneers here. Really, th th those are your options. You have these three 15 man, 15.5 man squads, uh, with the flamer being four man, actually. Um, I was using the pioneers, the assault pioneers, for a while, but truthfully, I hate like Sturm pioneers and everything, and these are the same thing with one man less. The bonus is they get there faster and they're 10 points less, which I think is crap in terms of Sturm pioneers and such. But anyway, um, they, they kind of underperform. They die really fast. These guys, they also die really fast, but they generally throw a TNT before they do, which is going to, you know, kind of wipe whatever they're fighting, which is why I decided to take these instead. There's definitely a good argument to be made for the defense group. It's a double machine gun on 15 points, which is, I mean, pretty good. There, there's nothing to complain about there. The only issue is that you have to bring them in Bedfords and not in the Jeeps. So that kind of kills your early, like, assault push kind of ability, which is why I'm taking the field engineers instead. Then we have two cards of Indian rifles with one vet. These are a significant upgrade to normal rifles. We can look right here why. Uh, you get a Thompson instead of the two Stens, and one Thompson is almost better than two Stens, to be honest with you. Uh, you get ten rifles instead of seven, and you get that Bren automatic rifle. So, And it's the exact same point cost. So you get two more men, more rifle power, uh, maybe uh, truthfully maybe a little knock on the submachine gun power, but that's okay. Um, for having just that much beefier of a squad for the same amount of points. They're also raiders, so that's always a plus they have higher stealth so yeah this is a, this is a significant upgrade over your regular rifles which is what what makes this division stronger than all the other commonwealth divisions like normal rifle commonwealth i'm kind of not counting sixth airborne they're their own like unique division then gurkha rifles are absolutely fantastic these guys are fanatical raiders they have in uh, at grenades they have double machine gun three thompson 12 man these are absolutely phenomenal uh they're absolutely great they, they are you have to bring in one vet and that's okay that's probably what you would do with them anyway although truthfully i'd love to have more of them these guys are absolutely great if there was a third card of these i think this division would be absolutely busted because you could bring them in c and just have like infinite these guys and these guys are so significantly better than their indian rifle counterpart parts and because basically because that double machine gun but also the three thompsons at close range these guys become really dangerous remember brens are automatic rifles which means these guys just generally perform a little teeny bit better at close range because of that then taking the Indian rifle leader because it's got the sniper. Snipers are fun. So, you know, you got lots of options here. Uh, Piots are horrible. 
Uh, phase B, I'm actually in an unvetted card of Indian Rifles. I just decided I wanted more infantry. I actually, in, in my game, like, kind of ran out of infantry, despite being a Palace vs. Maverick, and that could have been me playing bad, but we were also on Breast West, so, you know, that is just an infantry grinder of a map. And if I want to play long with this, this deck usually does. Uh, I just needed some more. So I decided to go unvetted. Then I have another card of Gurkha Rifles here. I'm bringing the Rifles Piot. The Rifles Piot is a little bit better because it does have double Brens instead of just one. So it, it helps a little. I don't rely on Piots to do much of anything, but they are a deterrent. And they will keep tanks back a little bit. You know, your opponent will have to think twice about driving into you. But I do not rely on these to actually kill tanks reliably. And then C phase, one more card of the Rifle Piots. Because again, they, they are they're weaker number wise than the Indian rifles but having the double Bren and the Piat does make a difference so that's why I'm taking those guys in C so that's the infantry there there's not a whole lot of options other than that I mean really I've taken everything that's not the rifles tanks Shermans I vet them all you could you could double vet them honestly it wouldn't be that painful to double vet but I kind of get to a point where I just start spamming these out so I'd like to have lots of them and I don't, I don't think this... I mean, the second vet does help, but of course it does. But a single vet, Sherman does quite well anyway. So, yeah, and these are more infantry support, of course. They really don't kill tanks very reliably. Uh, Stugs will bounce the shells of these pretty often, and that's really frustrating. Support tab. Not much to work with. You get Vickers HMGs, the 2-inch mortars, and supply. And that's it. Those are your options. The 2-inch mortars really aren't that good. Uh, they're too short of the range at only 540 meters, so that's that's an issue. Um, and Vickers, you, you take them because you got them. You get six. They're fine. Only 1,000 meter range, so support tab, definitely a weakness. AT, you don't really get options. It's six pounder, 17 pounder, and Piot. Not taking the Piot. You hear me complaining about them all the time, so I'm not going to waste a card bringing these guys in. And also, I'm bringing tons of Piots in on my infantry here. So it's basically between 6-pounders and 17-pounders. I'm basically just doing one card of each in both phases. Uh, they're fine. I mean, 17-pounders really underperform because you're spending 80 points for an AT gun that can only shoot tanks, and it doesn't even do it very well because of the, the accuracy only being 45%. They really actually struggle to kill tanks consistently because the second they get in that 2,000-meter range, they start shooting, which is great, and then the opponent just backs the tank out, and you've missed all your shots. And then they fly in with a bomber and kill it and you're out 80 points. So I do find these underperform really badly, despite looking like they should be awesome. They just never do what you need them to do, unfortunately. So it's 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 an okay AT tab. It's fine. I don't want to say it's bad because it's not, but it's also not good. So yeah, it's very lackluster. Commonwealth AT. The AA tab, 40 mils, which is nothing to complain about. This is fine. This is great. Uh, I don't really understand why they give you six cards of Bofors to work with. You only have four slots. Kind of strange. That's really strange. Like, really, really weird. Uh, maybe at some point in the deck build they had more slots on here. But that... It's still, it's still really weird. <laughs> you can't call six in, so I give you six. Um, continuing on. Arty tab. This tab is good for one reason, and it's this right here. The BL... Four and a half inch 114 millimeter artillery these are fantastic they're only 80 points they're extremely accurate not looking at this accuracy but just in terms of their spread on the battlefield when you guys get these when you get these guys in radio range they are very 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 good um they do a solid amount of damage they fire pretty quick these are really good units you can bring them in with the matador s supply so you have some supply on them i could bring in more but it's a little overboard i think uh i don't think i'm ever going to call in more than six of these uh call in an 81 mil inch mortars and then the off map because the only it, these are one point slots and i don't really need light artillery so there's really no other options uh so i'm bringing in the the off map here 140 mil 120 rounds it's, it's not bad um i think you get i think you get three charges but i don't know for that for sure you should I mean, I think you should get three charges out of it. So, uh, you know me, I'm not a huge off map guy. So it's kind of there as a necessary evil. I actually would never bring this in before like phase C when I'm deciding to push back with my balance deck, most likely. And then artillery commander, of course. Yeah, the, the artillery tabs lackluster, but th this unit is very good on its own. Uh, it doesn't make this a great artillery tab, but it does help it out. Air tab, your normal fabulous Commonwealth air tab. Taking the Boston Mark IVs, these are very solid. They drop big bombs. 
not like giganto bombs, but big bombs nonetheless for two twenty sevens. They go quite fast at four hundred forty kilometers an hour. They only have medium resilience though for a bomber. That's a little unfortunate. Uh, the curve is good though. You get two and A, four and B, and eight, uh, seven and C. Excuse me. Um, I'm bringing one card of Spitfires. I'm actually going to unvet these. I had this built slightly differently before, so I'm going to bring unvetted card here. Uh, Spitfires are fantastic. They're very fast. They catch everything. They do quite a lot of damage. They have extremely high agility, which means that AA has a hard time of shooting them down really quick and suppressing them, so that's definitely a plus. Um, so, yeah, good fighter. Uh, in B phase, more Bostons. I bring in a card of the Hurricane Mark IVs. These are not great AT planes. They, they really aren't, but they lay down a lot of shots pretty quick. Only 80 mils of penetration, but if you could panic the tank and they turn, it can definitely kill stuff. So it's not a bad weapon. It's not phenomenal, though. Don't expect this to take out a King Tiger or an IS-2 or anything like that. Or Even against a Tiger, it's going to really struggle. Um, so just be aware. And then I'm bringing in this card of Spitfire LF Mark III's. Oh, wait, sorry. Eights. My bad. Uh, has a great bomb loadout. This will kill anything it drops a bomb on. Really super fast. Uh, I'm bringing these in more as like extra fighters because they are exactly the same as these, just with a slower speed. Um, you know, and I just kind of found, you know, before this was another card of fighters, and I just kind of found those a little excessive. Cause Spitfires do perform quite well, so you should be able to get by with four of these. And you have your really solid AA tab of just Bofors forever. So having another card of something that bombs stuff is really useful, especially if you lose a Boston or two early. Um, you know, these guys can help fill that gap, especially if you can already down their AA. These guys can really be obnoxious for the opponent. So... That is the 8th Indian Infantry Division, at least how I built it, balanced. Um, I do not think this is a Maverick deck. I, I really would not build this in a Maverick form, though I'm sure you can, and I'm sure it fu functions just fine. Uh, I just think with the depth of your infantry and all that stuff, you, you can definitely play balance quite successfully on this division. So if you enjoyed this content, please hit that like button, subscribe, and consider joining me on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day.